The GOAT debate is by far the most common debate in basketball history, but there's a recent debate that's taking over social media. Fans are debating which high school team is the best of all time, 2016 Chino Hills with the Ball Bros, or 2020 Montverde with Caden M. And today, I'll be solving basketball's hottest debate. So, to evaluate these two teams, I'm going to use three different categories, performance, roster, and playstyle. Let's start off with performance. The Chino Hills team in 2015-16 went 35-0 on the season, they won their state championship and finished ranked as the consensus number one team in the country. The team went to modern day and completely blew them out the water, beating them 102-54. They even picked up a close win over 2016 Montverde, a roster that featured Anthony Simons and RJ Barrett. The team's average margin of victory was 28.7. All season long, they took down ranked team after ranked team, and off that roster, they produced 7 D1 basketball players. On the contrary, Montverde was also undefeated, but instead with 25 wins and not 35. They only had one game that was decided in single digits, and their average margin of victory in a schedule of other highly ranked national teams was 38.9. They were also the consensus number one team in the country, and ended up producing 12 D1 basketball players. Even though Montverde had a higher margin of victory and was much more dominant, I'm actually giving this one to Chino Hills. Their public school, and going 35-0 against all the tough competition they faced was such a tough task, and they only had kids in the local area. That too, with two 14-year-old freshmen in the starting lineup in Lamelo Ball and Onyeka Okongwu, Chino Hills had a great year. Montverde also played 10 less games, and their stats were probably a little bit inflated. Let's move on to the roster category, starting with Chino Hills. Chino Hills' starting point guard was Lonzo Ball, who was the number one point guard in the entire class of 2016. In his senior season, Lonzo averaged a triple-double with 24 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, and 12 assists per game. Also, adding on 5 steals per game. He received honors such as Naismith Player of the Year, USA Today Player of the Year, and Mr. Basketball USA. In his lone season at UCLA, he won numerous honors including Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. Lonzo went number 2 overall in the 2017 NBA Draft to the Los Angeles Lakers, and was later traded to the Pelicans in the Anthony Davis trade. After being a very good pickup for the Chicago Bulls, Lonzo has been hurt and hasn't appeared in an NBA game for over 2 years. We are wishing to see him on the court as soon as possible. The starting shooting guard was freshman phenom Lamella Ball. During his freshman season, he averaged 16.4 points per game and 4 assists per game, and shared the honor of Max Preps National Freshman of the Year with teammate Onyeka Okongwu. At the time, he was actually 5'11", but grew to be 6'6 by the time he was in the NBA. Lamella only stayed at Chino Hills for one more season before he left and had multiple stops in the next three years, like Lithuania, Spire Academy, and in Australia with the Illawarra Hawks of the NBL. Lamelo was selected with the number 3 overall pick in the 2020 draft by the Hornets. He has been the franchise cornerstone in Charlotte and has been selected to one All-Star game. As good as Lamelo has been, he's endured some of the similar injury issues as his brother Lonzo. At small forward is junior Eli Scott. Alongside the Ball brothers, he was a great scorer and complemented the team. Scott was rated as a 3-star recruit in the class of 2017 and committed to Loyola Marymount. Scott played 5 seasons as a Lion where he was a 14.2 point per game career scorer. He was most recently seen playing professionally in Slovakia, where he averaged 19 points per game. A power forward was junior Leangelo Ball, who actually led the team in scoring, averaging 27.4 points per game. Leangelo was one of the most reliable scorers for the Huskies during his junior and senior seasons, and in his senior season, he averaged 33.8 points per game. Leangelo committed to UCLA, but after a shoplifting incident in China, he left school to play professionally in Lithuania with his brother. He originally signed a G League deal with the Thunder and then played for the Hornets in the Summer League. He has spent the past couple of seasons with the Greensboro Swarm, the G League affiliate of the Hornets, but has never received consistent minutes. Routing out the starting lineup was 6'9 freshman center Onyeka Okongwu. Okongwu averaged 8 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game during his freshman season. He remained at Chino Hills where he started for the Huskies for the remaining 3 years of his career. Onyeka went to USC where he averaged 16 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 blocks a game and was named to the Pac-12 All-Freshman Team and the first team All-Pac-12. Okongwu was selected with the number 6 overall pick in the 2020 NBA Draft by the Atlanta Hawks. He has since carved out a solid career so far for the Hawks as a backup center. Overall, three of Chino Hill's starters from the 2015-16 season went on to be top six picks in the NBA draft. Let's take a look at Montverde. At Montverde, Cade Cunningham blossomed from a wing into a point guard with total command of the game. During an era where oversized ball handlers like Luka Doncic had become the most valuable archetype in the NBA, Cunningham was on his way to greatness. Due to the all-around talent on the roster, Cade led the team by averaging only 13.8 points per game. 
He spent a year at Oklahoma State where his brother was an assistant coach before declaring for the draft. After being selected first overall by the Pistons, Cade has had a slightly underwhelming start to his career. The raw ability to create players and finish at the rim is definitely there, but it's not converting into wins and success, and Cade has been extremely inefficient throughout his entire career. Next to Cade in the backcourt is Moses Moody. Moody is a knockdown shooter and lockdown defender who is an ideal match next to Cunningham. His ability to influence the game without needing the ball in his hands is something teams at every level look for. After high school, he spent one season at Arkansas before becoming a lottery pick getting drafted by the Warriors. He's gone on to be an impact player getting rotational minutes at the highest level and also an NBA champion. At the wing position, we have 6'6", Caleb Houston. Only a sophomore at this time, Houston showcased a rare combination of size and shooting ability on this team. With a quick and smooth stroke, Houston is the ideal fit for the modern game around these four other guys. After playing at the University of Michigan, Houston entered the draft. He was drafted at the start of the second round and now gets decent minutes for the Orlando Magic. At the four, we have who I think is the best player on the team, Scotty Barnes. Many people refer to this 2020 Montverde team as Cadenet, meaning that Cade is the best player and he's surrounded by four other decent and good players. Honestly, I think it could be Scotty in him. Scotty might even be better than Cade. At this point as a senior, Scotty was a very decorated player for the youth team USA's and showcased a very unique blend of playmaking and defense for his size. After a year at Florida State, Scotty was drafted 4th overall to the Toronto Raptors. Now in his 3rd season, he's already won Rookie of the Year and is gunning for his first All-Star appearance. He's kept up his great defense and playmaking in the NBA, even finding a shot from 3 this season, now averaging 20 plus points per game and developing into one of the NBA's best all-around talents. At center, this team has now 7-footer Daron Sharp. Back then, he was 6'10 and 225. He was a powerful big man who could run the floor. He gave this Montverde team more beef against teams with traditional centers. He has great hands and was a great rebounder, especially on the offensive end of the floor. After one season at UNC, he was drafted by the Brooklyn Nets. Now in his third season, he averages between 5-10 to 10 points per game in the NBA, getting decent minutes. I didn't even mention Dariq Whitehead, the 6th guy on this team who's made the NBA, who's also a current rookie for the Nets. Unfortunately, Dariq's rookie season was cut short as he underwent a season ending surgery recently. Overall, Chino Hills only had 3 players who played in the NBA compared to Montverde's 6. Without question, Montverde takes this category. In a shorter time, some of Montverde's players have accomplished more in the NBA than the Chino Hills squad. You do have to consider that Chino Hills is a public high school and that all the players on the roster are homegrown which is still extremely impressive. In comparison, Mount Verde is a basketball academy in Florida. Despite that, 6-3 is a big margin in NBA players, and so is 12-7 in D1. In terms of our categories, we are now tied 1-1, and we are entering our last category, playstyle. In this category, I'm going to talk about what if a hypothetical matchup happened, and how would the team's playstyles match up against each other. When we look at the Chino Hills playstyle, it was a lot of transition offense. Transition offense was the staple of this team. The Huskies played at a breakneck pace on offense, routinely throwing full court passes. Lonzo Ball, the future number 2 pick, spearheaded the attack with his tremendous court vision and complete unselfishness. I mean, this team was literally running circles around their opponents. Chino Hills only played in the half court when forced to, preferring to play in transition their strength. They'd rather use their speed, shiftiness, and handles to create a bucket than forcing to slow down and play in the half court. When the Huskies did settle down in the half court, they only had three really simple things. A high ball screen for Lonzo, an isolation for Lonzo, or an isolation in the post for LiAngelo. They had no interest in running any tricky sets. On defense, their guards would make risky plays to get steals and let the interior presence of Winyaka Okongwu help them set up the fast break. The Montverde team right now has two big advantages in a hypothetical game with Chino Hills. First is their depth, and second is their height. Every player in Montverde's starting lineup is at least 6 foot 6, and also off the bench, they had players like Zeb Jackson, Tariq Whitehead, Langston Love, and Ryan Nemhart, who were all nationally ranked. If Chino Hills is able to run a transition based offense like they usually did, height won't matter as much because they'll be able to get to their spots and hit their shots. But I will say, I'm gonna have to give this to Montverde, meaning that Montverde wins 2-1. And the reason is because the cohesiveness and the chemistry that this Montverde team had was unlike other. They had a bunch of spot up shooters, a bunch of tall, wingy, rangy players who could all handle the ball and dribble, who could all shoot, who could all create, and they were just a perfect blend of players together. I mean, Cade Cunningham and Scotty Barnes on the same team, just imagine that. And LaMelo is 5 for 11, and we know how good LaMelo is. He's mostly going to get guarded by Moses Moody, who at this time was like 6'4". The height would just not work in terms of a full organized game. 
I will say though, Chino Hills kind of has the nostalgia because if you think about it, the stuff that Chino Hills was doing at that time in terms of social media and just video content was different. I mean, they had their own shows like Ball and the Family and then LaMelo was super big on social media. Lonzo had a big following, LiAngelo. I mean, these guys were super big, LaVar Ball. And there was a lot of hype and attention around them. So whenever you saw a Ball is Life mixtape or just a mixtape of any of these guys, they were doing it different compared to anyone else. So there's a lot of nostalgia involved to it and the type of plays are making are the type of plays you can envision making on a basketball court the big passes the lobs the shifty moves the threes like a lot of the stuff they're doing it's the type of neighborhood pick up and just cool basketball fan really love to watch which is why at the high school level what they do is so special but also it does create a slight bit of nostalgia factor which does boost chino hills in this debate but realistically if we're playing a 5v5 or a full sanctioned match i think monver just does have the edge because of how they play together their height and their modern talent thank you guys for watching i'm still super torn about this debate but it was a really fun video to make just to look at all the info about all these teams players and schools over the past couple years and see how it's all turned out hope you guys did enjoy please subscribe if you're new i'll see you in the next one peace bye